Hi guys, thanks for being here. And and this is the warm up talk for uh, the project, the beginning, uh, the, the project of uh, Connect with Southeast Asia gender issue and uh, residency in the cloud. This project, and because this project organized by Thinkers Studio and co organized by uh, Dance Nucleus, so I'm really happy that we have Dan Daniel, the artistic director from Dance Nucleus, here with us today to. Uh, introduce the, 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 the organization, the, the platform Dance Nucleus, and also how we start this uh, project. And, and before everything uh, uh, start, is there any rules that we need to let the audiences know? Yes, <laughs> a nice cue. <laughs> yeah, okay. So during the whole process, if you have any questions, you can just uh, type in the chat box, let us know, and we will keep it down, note it down. And then in the first session, me and Daniel, we will share our own organization and this project. And then we will have a 20 minutes talk, and then we will present the following uh, presentation or activities event happens online to let everybody know. And we will keep like a 10 to 15 minutes to have the QA session. So maybe let's just start from Daniel. Are we going straight into my 10 minutes now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say something else first. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, or, have, or, like, or you want to say hello to, to the people? <laughs> yes, hello everybody. <laughs> so sorry. It's a sudden, yeah, right? I've been Zoom so much, I forgot like sometimes yeah. where I am right now. I'm just sitting in front of my computer. So um, yes, hi everybody. I'm aware most of you are, are, are colleagues in Taiwan. So uh, I prepared a little something, but I maybe I should um, be very efficient. Uh, yes, unmute myself. I'm gonna share screen and and just share a little bit. So, but I'm aware that you, uh, I should also quick, very quickly introduce Dance Nucleus. So, so uh, first of all, I'm an independent artist. And then over the last few years, I've been uh, looking after an art space where I am right now. And uh, we are a small team of four people. We are a space that supports uh, artists and creative development um, uh, funded by the National Arts Council of Singapore. So over the last few years, on top of my own creative work, uh, making and touring and presenting work, performance work, I've also been sort of like curating and coming up with lots of programs to try and help artists, uh, not just in Singapore, but also working regionally, trying to create partnerships to so that there, there could be more networking and um, continuity and flow for different projects. So... Uh, a lot, every, everything that I uh, that you might want to know about Dance Nucleus, I'm happy to talk to you about it later or, or via my website. So if you go to our website, www.dancenucleus, you can find out a lot of stuff about us. So we're, we're in the, the website is, has a lot of information, but we're in the midst of like simplifying and even tightening our use of the website because we see the website as a very important source of information where we uh, not only share and doc uh, with documentation, but also connect and give people a clear idea of the different kinds of projects that we have been working uh, over the years. Yeah. Today though, I, I'm really keen, I know it's not gonna be a lecture, but I just wanna pl plant a few ideas in relation to the cloud residency that, that uh, Ikai has uh, organized. Um, and I'm very happy to do that because it really works with the spirit of the kind of translocal partnerships that I have increasingly felt is very important in, um, uh, in the arts uh, in Asia because it's quite new, uh, a way of, of working in Asia and also given the, 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 pen, the context of the pandemic. So I, I think I don't have enough time to go through a lot of things in depth, but I'm just going to quickly mention a few things that's on my screen. So I've been reading this book called The Life of Lines and uh, by, by uh, this writer, Tim Ingold. Um, it's quite an interesting book, very easy to read. So you might want to pick it up. But the main part of this book is really talking about lines, uh, the, the ontology, what a line is. And, and, and from it, he really spins, pun intended, a lot of different connections uh, into uh, relationships in the world and so on. 
So he's, here he talks about, I just pulled out a few quick quotes. Um, so he is writing about the idea of uh, things clinging to other things. And in order for one thing to be connected to another, what you need is a line, not, not a blob. So for in this particular chapter that I'm referring to, he, he basically says that everything in the world, whether it's a thought or a, an actual object, is either a, a blob or a line. So here he's saying that um, line is, is an essence of sociality. There is an intertwining of lines when people cling to one another. In a world of blobs, there could be no social life. Indeed, since there is no life that is not social, uh, that does not en uh, entail an intertwining, uh, an entwining of lines. So if you're thinking about life, you have to think about what is social. And for him, the moment you talk about social, you're thinking about lines entwining with each other. So some social theories have um, been thinking about the world as assemblages, meaning how you combine one thing maybe to another thing and what is the relationship between them. But for Tim Ingold, this is too static and it fails to answer the question of how the entities of which it is composed actually are connected to each other. What connects this pen to this lighter? So the principle of the line by contrast allows us to bring the social back to life. In the life of lines, the parts are not the composed the com com components. Rather, it is about the movement between things. So um, I'm going to go a little faster. An ontology of line, right? If we were to come up with a philosophy where we really think about the, the essence or the being of the line, allows us to to um, dispense with a world obsessed with objects, but in a way that doesn't undermine or overmine um, the, the objects. So it's almost like saying things don't just exist as objects. They occur, they, they happen, things happen. Things are emitted into the world, not as nouns, but as verbs, as things that is going on. So I think in the context of dance, it's very useful to, to think about connectivity and movement between things. And so of late, I've been using the, choosing to use the word translocalism as opposed to internationalism. Because uh, uh, in other network conversations that I've been in, there's a lot of conversations about also, um, do we, uh, how do we do touring now? What is artistic production now? We cannot tour and present our work. Everything is online and so on and so forth. So, but I think it's really useful, it might be useful to reflect on switching from internationalism, guo yi zu yi, towards a, a what, and, and, and think about why we are connecting like this at all, by thinking about the, the, a, a kua yu zu yi, like a way of working on, working across, working beyond, working through, changing and transferring uh, from one to another, as opposed to just being together, being between things, sharing things. And also when we think about guo yi, guo yi, we, we are usually thinking about um, national uh, representation. And increasingly, you know, as I sit at my computer and talking to you, you could be somebody down the street. You could be somebody in South America and what we are meeting on Zoom in the same way. So in a certain way, distance have closed and it doesn't, it feels we're, we're further apart. We're not in the same room together, but in some ways we are, we are, we are just right next to each other. And it, I, 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 I fail to see why we should only be connecting with each other via countries, Daniel Koch bracket, Singapore, Gao Yikai bracket, Taiwan, or rather Singapore bracket and then Taipei bracket. So what if, what if we have to reorganize the way we relate to one another and these kinds of lines of relations that connect us? So I like to imagine a network that consists first as lines. That means usually when we think about a diagram like this, we like to plot the dots first and then we draw the lines. But what if there's, there's first lines and there are no dots, no nodes until the lines intersect? So I'm curious about these points of intersection when lines wrap around each other. Some of you know me, uh, the, the artistic work that I do, I also work a lot with ropes. So I'm really interested in like the aesthetic of a knot as well. When one rope connects 
to another. And so what happens in that knot is, is uh, when, when the lines meet is what really excites me. So I, I want to say again also maybe some idea that um, we also think about when we think, think about intercultural exchange, you think of culture as culture A and then culture B and then they meet. But what if there is no culture until there is exchange? The exchange happens first. If you think about whether it's Indian identity or, or Chinese culture, no matter how you look at it, at some point when you look back into history, the culture itself is not static. It's always a result of one thing changing to another. So maybe that's always how culture is, is produced. So right now in this kind of exchange, perhaps this is culture per se, not, not when one, one culture meets another. So I, I say this because sometimes I've been involved in conversations about cultural diplomacy. Um, which is a term that a lot of um, arts council like to use when they connect with another arts council. But I always feel that like as an independent artist, the kind of work that I do when I connect myself to another, this kind of organic creation of desire paths and, 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 and investment in a longer term relationship is perhaps a more interesting, a richer, and maybe even more effective way of thinking about cultural diplomacy, as opposed to a government signing an MOU with another government and go, okay, now we throw money at it and get our artists to work together. Can it be the other way around? Can it be artists meeting artists and then creating these different ways of encountering with each other in order to dem then demonstrate back to the state, to the government, what culture actually entails? So uh, final point I want to make is that um, I think more and more over the last God knows, 15 years, I keep hearing words in English that starts with co. And I feel like it's just a telltale sign of things to come, whether we are thinking more and more about wanting to work collaboratively, collectively, thinking about community and co-authorship. I think gradually in a post-pandemic uh, environment, we might be moving more and more into an image like this, whereby it's maybe art is, might be, I'm just, it's a, it's a question I have. What if it's less and less going to be about who is the star artist and how this art star artist make us a big important work, but that artists by default are about these making these connections these kind of small scale, sporadic, seemingly small scale, unimportant sporadic connections from one to another. And no one is at the center, but there's just a lot of activities going on. Can it still be very dynamic? Can that not still be a very rich art scene and art psychology? So, uh, and I also think that such a um, way of reorienting our, our minds about what makes an artist, what makes an art, work, um, this might be a way to rethink how to make the arts more sustainable as well. Um, so I think that's, that's my attempt at trying to frame um, our meeting here. That, is that more than 10 minutes? <laughs> don't <laughs> I worry, think don't worry. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I thought you would start with uh, introducing dance nucleus more, but this is a way much more interest, interesting now. <laughs> And, and being, being honestly, I was inspiring by this idea because we've been talking about the ideas. You, you, you taught me this like a, two years ago, right? 2019, I remember. Yeah. And then, then after that, we start to having a conversation of this uh, residency project, although there have been changed in different kinds of form in these two years, actually. So, okay. And then we will come back later to talk about deeper uh, what we think about networking and, and, and also maybe some cases you would like to share from Dancing Place or, or your, your thoughts. So uh, from my part, okay, I will share my screen. This is my, I was really just uh, beginning with introducing Thinker Studio quickly. Yeah, we founded it in 2013 in Taipei and, and running a space called Thinkers Theater in Taipei in the old district. 
called Da Dao Chen. And, and to someone, if you don't know, you also can check out our website, uh, www.thinkerstheater.com. And then you will see more ideas and, and more information about uh, our organization. And ideally, uh, organization or our team is all organized by whole uh, art administrators. There is no artist in our team. And we try to play, uh, uh, build up a kind of a platform for the artists who are trying to uh, present their work or uh, try to be accompanied with them and assist them in the process, how they you know, do their work. So uh, with this space and, and basic idea and thought, I, I think it's the first time I went to Dance Lab, the workshop uh, organized by Dance Nucleus in 2019. And just like what I mentioned, I was really inspired by Dance, uh, Daniel, the idea of what he talked about it. So in 2020, we it's actually our first time to really officially uh, being as a partnership to work something together. And then there was uh, the first dance lab happened in Taipei. And at that time, it was the first time pandemic happens last year. I remember it was, it was in June or July. And then uh, the Dance Lab Taipei Orga, uh, curated by Tuang Dingyun, the artist, and he organized uh, 12, invite 12 artists from different art scene to having a uh, five or six days in uh, a workshop together with uh, the whole international dance lab. Dance lab. I remember there's a dance lab Sydney, dance lab Singapore, dance lab Bangkok. Is it Bangkok? No, Hong Kong, okay. Hong Kong, and uh, uh, Delhi. Delhi, yeah, a lot of cities, six or seven cities, right? Six, Liu Ke. Six, yeah. It, it was amazing, you know, and 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 the idea is really just like what Daniel mentioned about the the, the dots to to the line, yeah. And then after that, last year, I realized in Taiwan, uh, the, the information of the pandemic from our neighbors, neighbor countries is really uh, limited in our news. So I also organized another event happens online. I invited seven uh, producers from seven countries in Southeast Asia region and to share the situation in their own country or city to let us know what is the art thing happens and what is the culture or art policy and, and how do we picture and imagine in the future, maybe 2021 or 2022, something like that. And of course, like what I say, why the project we take, we, we talk about it, that the project that we are doing is the gender, sex and gender issue. And the reason why I want to focus on sex and gender reason, uh, sex and gender issue, one of the reasons is in the past years, uh, Thinker Studio, we've been working with different artists who focus on this issue, uh, like a Ping one, she's the feminist, and, and doing the nudity performances and uh, uh, doing a workshop. And then also last year, we have a really young artist uh, talking about the queer and, and, and uh, having the first solo show in Taipei. So with all of the combination and ideas together that makes us I think a studio try and, and also Dance Nicholas thinking about in a topic or uh, any theme that we can create a bigger networking and with all of the young and, and really new artists together. So that's the really beginning of the connect with Southeast Asia and residency in the cloud. And at first last year, we tried to put uh, different artists into different cities. Actually, we will, we will have the performances happen in uh, Philippines, Manila, we will have the residency project in Taipei and Singapore exchange the artists. But uh, as we know, the pandemic really affect all of us. So in the last, uh, in the end of last year, we have a few times discussion. We try to put the project online and let the artists to do the residency online. The, 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 the online idea is more like a, a we still want the artists or the new artists to having the conversation and, and, and gather all of the artists together and try to develop or adapt ideas and explore the new ways to work. 
actually I, I want to focus on the new way of the world you know because since we're all working online at this moment uh my personally i don't want to reject online system or or this kind of the way i would say we need to adjust our thought so residency in the past usually we go to a country or a city or a place the artist will stay there and then the public probably wouldn't really understand what are they doing or what were they doing in that period of time. So this time I tried to build up a, a web page will allow the artists to put all of the information and their process of the creativity on the web page. So I will uh, show up our web page for a bit. Okay, can you see it, right? Okay, this is our web page. So uh, we have four groups of artists, uh, two groups from Taiwan and one group from Philippines and one group of artists from Singapore. And each group of artists, they were paired with one facilitator from Taiwan and then Thailand. And then uh, there will be the five week residency project. And then in the whole process, of course, they will have the meeting with their facilitators online talking about uh, the development of their project or their creations. And then after that, they need to put on their development, like an artist, uh, artistic journal on the web page. They will up upload by any form, any way, and anytime they would like to, to share the process and their thought ideas to the public. This is one of the way I try to encourage the new artists to, to put on the thoughts and trying to, in this stage, communicate with the general public, not only wait until the last moment when we present the works. Yeah. Okay. So if you have more, uh, if you want to know more, you can go to the web page and see the whole journal from the artist. Okay. And also like what I introduced, there's an artist, there's a facilitators. Of course, we have two observers will uh, participate in the whole process, one from Philippines and Henry from Taiwan will observe the process and the presentation. And then they also will give us the, uh, their notes and idea upload on the web page. So this the whole idea of what I'm thinking about the, 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 the project. I want to add a little bit more is this article, this one, okay. <laughs> Uh, the whole article is all from in, in Mandarin, actually, and it's written by a curator from Taiwan who is from the uh, uh, Fujio, uh, uh, who is a curator, uh, Nabuo Takamori, Nabuo Takamori, Gao Sen Xingnan. The article that he wrote, like uh, in 2016, yeah, uh, this is uh, being translated by Google, so probably it's not that correct, but. Anyway, in 2016, there's a really big uh, policy, uh, new policy happens in Taiwan. We call it new Southern policy. You know, the, 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 the government trying to encourage us to have a more international exchange, no matter in the economic way, cultural art uh, perspective, to have a more collaboration and, and cooperation with uh, the, the countries in Southeast Asia. And this is the beginning. And at the moment, until now, the government start to open a lot of grants or chance, chances for us to apply it. But however, what my observation is, a lot of uh, project or a lot of people who apply the, the project all focusing on form. How do we do the collaboration in a new piece? Or how do we do the talks together? Or how do we do the residency exchange together? But I do like the idea of what uh, Nabuo mentioned about it. Uh, the sentence, what I highlight here, uh, he said, the, the basic idea is when we doing the international exchange or when we building up the relationship or even when we're talking about networking, usually in our own perspective, our central perspective, our perspective we will say, what do we want? You know, you know, what do we really want? But maybe we should change is, why does the other party or what does the other people want from us? Actually, in, in Mandarin is 从我们要什么,可能我们要变成对方为什么需要我们? Why they need us? This is more important. And, and in this perspective, he also extended and talked about, so 
uh, when we talk about Taiwan here, compared with other Asian countries, Taiwanese society has almost no censorship against the creators. So if Taiwan can be actively promoted as a platform for the publication and distribution of the prohibition, uh, prohibited works in Asian region, I kind of agree with uh, the sentence that he shared and talk about it. Since we don't have the censorship or we don't have much censorship in Taiwan and what my observation and what I know, uh, some of the artists in Southeast Asia and in Asia uh, actually pretty focused on gender, sex and gender issue. Why don't we use this topic and why, why don't we take this topic uh, as a theme? Then we try to put all the artists together and uh, create a network together. So this is the whole beginning and, and basic idea from the start. Okay, I think I finished sharing my, my part, but I also want to ask Daniel a little bit more about dense nucleus. Yes, in this period of uh, years, you also create a lot of project and the event, trying to build up the network, right? And also support the younger generation. In this perspective, would you like to share to us why uh, creating the network or, or uh, supporting the younger generation is kind of the main and important for dense nucleus in these couple of years and how you do it? Well, that's, I mean, uh, uh, my answer for that is necessarily very long because mm. there are, it feels like there are many things to do to, to, that needs doing. Um, mm. So I would say that for me, the, the, in, like the way to, to speak simply about it is that as an independent artist myself um, uh, have, uh, and, and having had the opportunity to have access to different grants, different kind of co-production support, collaborations overseas, presentations and touring, um, it, I realized that uh, like it's actually very difficult to do because uh, the independent artist is like a one man band. You have to split your brain into different parts to be a academic researcher guy who likes theory. Another one who is like crazy eccentric, just play and dream. Another one who's very good at networking and selling themselves and being a bit of a businessman. Then another one who is a very tidy, methodical administrator. Like, how do you find all that in one package? And then on top of that, you have to figure out how to, how to work with others, like where to get information to find a producer, to, to go for a residency, and how to organize your project so that the initial research becomes a creation. And when do you do a work in progress showing? Blah, 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 blah. So it's like extremely complicated so much simpler if you just get a company a, a run a grant to run a company in my opinion yeah that it's like it's you 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 have to have so many skill sets to be an independent artist and then at the same time i'm aware that it's become also more and more difficult i mean there was a period of time it almost feels like it's a natural evolution process in many, many countries, say, like including the ones in Europe as well as Singapore, there was a period of time where there was like, when the government decides we have money to spend on arts and culture, we will, we will give grants out. And then a lot of artists began to form companies. And then came a next, almost, almost like a next step. There will be like a bunch of artists that goes, either we don't want to join companies, we don't want to form companies, we don't want to be you know, maybe it's not interesting anymore or it's just not sustainable to have more and more and more companies. So people began to work independently more and more. But even then, today you can see that there's like funding cuts in so many countries and um, so much of the, the, the movement from art centers and presentation platforms has gone into co-production as well. And meanwhile, there are more and more education uh, programs producing BA artists, MA artists, and it's just become like, what on earth is going on? And then on top of that, the, the rise of social media, not just internet, but social media, where self-production 
has become a very, it's in some ways a lot easier than ever before, right? I can, I can speak to people from many countries at once uh, just by having a, an Apple computer. Now, this wasn't po possible 15 years ago, you know? So things have changed so rapidly. So the way we produce, the way we create, the way we research in the arts also has shifted. Doesn't, it doesn't mean that the older or status quo way of making and producing art has gone away. It just means more and more and more, more and more different ideas, more and more players, more and more money needed, more and more places to go, people to meet. It's just become a bit crazy. And um, so I feel like it's just gotten, I'm, I'm extremely interested in how as an independent artist, it's become very unsustainable. I can't just spend all my time running around trying to make people like me so that I can get opportunities and grants and I'm almost like waiting for food to fall off the table before I can eat. You know, what if then there has to be a different way of working? And that, that was what motivated me to, to begin working in Dance Nucleus. And then, then, of course, I know not everybody will end up being able to work like I do anyway. So then the question is shifted to what does it mean to be making art today? You know, what are the... So I, I, I call this dramaturgy of production. Um, usually when we talk about dramaturgy, we're talking about dramaturgy in a, a, a work, right? But I, I feel like all the things that I've just mentioned, it, you know, is, is about production, production of culture, production of art, production of knowledge. And in and of itself, that process of production has a dramaturgy to it. Because we don't just go, oh, I need to file this application. I need to talk to that person and, and have a meeting. But what if all this is part of creative work too? Like you have to choreograph your way through production. So I've become more and more interested in sort of like connecting different artists, talking to artists in different parts of the, of, of the world, especially Asia, because our infrastructure is new, a bit weak, but there's a lot of willpower to connect and collaborate. So I think something quite exciting going on over here. And, and that's why I, I, I decided to work more and more like that. Yeah. Uh, can, can I say uh, what you or Dance Nucleus thinking about the networking is a little bit kind of like a resources integration. We Sorry? put all of the, the resources integration. Can I say the whole networking process, this is a kind of the perspective, how we think and, and put the resources into different ways and different perspective together. I would like to be even more practical than that. I mean, it's mm. certainly that, and that's a part of it. Mm. But I, I realized, for example, in, in Dance Nucleus, we're answerable to the government. In Singapore, everything is connected back to the government. So how then do we give the government what they didn't know they want? You know, So it's about like, ah, so they have this arts plan, you know, the bureaucrats want this, this, this. But for example, they want internationalization. But for them, internationalization is about exporting Singapore. Singapore works, take the good ones, sell them, hope people buy, and then Singaporean artists can travel and tour and fly the Singapore flag. But that's a very old way of working. And then frankly, if, if European presenters are looking at Asian works, they wouldn't be think, looking at Singapore work first um, because you want Asia. If you want Asia, you look at Japan, look at China, look at India, <laughs> Indonesia. Like why are you looking at this little island unless you're just after the money? I mean, I'd be really, really blunt here, right? So what Singapore has is, is cultural capital, uh, sorry, uh, financial capital. And I mean, there is cultural capital. Like, I mean, in, in Singapore itself, if you bother to look, there's a lot of weird uh, commingling of different cultures over, over a long period of time. But what is, what, but it's very hard to sell. It's not very sexy to sell Singapore. So, so then I have to try and convince the government that actually not only can we speak in a different way when we think about working with other countries, but also working with other countries this way is a way to make more money. 
Because if you give me $10,000 to run X, right? If I can then, then locally, nobody wants to partner with me or there's only so many partners. But right now, if I partner with Thinker Studio on, on paper, I can say, we got more money. So it's sometimes as simple as that. So, you know, if I'm then able to go back to the government and said, like, I took your money and I got more people to join us and we made friends along the way and the artists get to network, get to support, learn from each other. They might even get to travel. Like, this is what I mean by giving the government what they didn't know they want. Um, and yeah, I'll stop there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got one more question actually, and 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 because uh, a lot of thoughts I, I we've already talked about it before, but I also kind of trying to having more conversation with uh, uh, either the government or the institution who belongs to the government or something, and I noticed that Dance Nucleus actually having or or a lot of project that you're running working with the independent uh, organization in Asia. Is there any reason? If, if we, I'm trying to understand as opposed to working with larger organizations? I don't know. In, in a lot of perspective, uh, what people would say the larger organization, they might have more resources. The institution, they might have uh, bigger or larger uh, uh, resources or money. So when you choose uh, independent uh, uh, organizations or, or the like us, Thinker Studio, where independently we we get the resources from the government, we apply the grants by our own. We don't support it from the government. I, the, I again, I'm sorry. I have many answers to like no. a question like this. I I I want to say first of all, um, I think I I try to try to think a little bit like an economist. Yeah, I'm no good at it, but you know, it's as an artist, I try. I like to think that different things can be capital. Capital is capital is what what is capital? Um so you, there are many different kinds of capital, right? So financial capital, when we think about resources, is one, but there are also social and symbolic capital. And sim social capital is not to be underestimated. So, so a lot of independent artists are thinking, oh, I'm not in an organization. But the pandemic has made it very, very clear that in times of the pandemic, the large institutions are more stuck than the individuals, right? They can't, they, if you have this building, this building is for this purpose. Even if you don't program anything, you're losing millions, right? And so you have to protect it. So in over the pandemic, it's almost like treading water, trying to not sink. And um, so you'll find that all these bigger art centers and platforms that are just waiting for the pandemic to be over. I mean, they try to do things, do digital stuff like you and I, but when you are an individual, your overheads are so much lower. If you think of yourself as an ins institution of one, right? And you are on the same, but if you try, right? You use three as an exercise. In the institution of one versus an institution of say 110. Um, and then, and then, but yet in some ways you are equal, right? You, but where, you, where you don't have um, big space or a lot of money, you have flexibility, you have versatility, you have mobility. You can switch and change. You can still produce information. You can be a social influencer if you're that gifted, right? You can be a YouTube star and, and reach tens of thousands of people. In this time, it's worth asking, do you still need a theater? Um, we need to begin to ask these kinds of questions. Do you still need a stage that sits uh, that, that's for 1,000 people to look at you? Um, and you don't even know who they are. They buy tickets, they sit in the dark and you don't know who they are. Why don't you be able to interact with people in other ways? So it's not a simple question of whether it's like cloud residency, i.e. equals uh, we cannot meet face-to-face -face, so we just do digital. It's not a simple either or because it already by 2021, after 2022, we know digital, physical, they're all parts of a whole and it's up to your creativity to to mix and match and make it work. 
So when I think about cloud residency, digital residency, I, I hope we're not talking about sitting in front of Zoom for hours and hours, day after day, like because that would be really boring and very tiring. But instead, can we think of much more creative ways to use all the different digital channels and um, simple technology like our mobile phones? And um, we can make a lot, we can do a lot, we can create. So we can literally be artists in residence, i.e. stay at home and uh, as opposed to going somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm, I know it's not perfect to work like that, but it has many plus sides is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but it's kind of like that we're finding a way in this pandemic moment. But there's, a, of course, a lot of creativity way we should focus on. And, and I kind of agree with you, like the bigger theater, the institution, they're kind of having the, the frame. And, and sometimes it can be stuck. Like, for, for example, the institution here in Taiwan is not allowed to use Zoom. Oh, yeah. Zoom there, yeah. <laughs> so, but but for me, Zoom is kind of pretty easy and 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 pretty nice to use as, as a meeting platform or or doing exchange or or having some connections. So so it's kind of interesting, like a, like a, what you say. Okay, and because we don't have much time, so I would like to change a little bit. Maybe I will open ten minutes for the audiences here. If there's anyone have the questions that you would like to know, and then I would like to uh, invite our project manager, manager later after the QA session to introduce uh, the, our presentation in two weeks after. So if you have any question or if you have any information you would like to know, you can leave uh, the message in the chat box or you can you know, just open or turn on your microphone and just let us know. Usually, they will be a little bit quiet now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, who's speaking? Hi, Daniel. Janet. Hi, Janet. Janet. Long time no see. I love you. It's so nice to be here. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm nice to meet you. I just have a question. Now, I'm the guest. I'm not the another person that you know in the think of the studio. Yes, I'm just wondering, uh, because I was quite touched as what you just sharing, the perspective of uh, this project, but I'm just wondering, um, have you ever thought about maybe in the future, uh, this kind of organization who helps a lot about the, uh, the young artists um, what will the, this kind of organize, organization will be in the future? Uh, is, uh, is there, um, will this kind of organization will become like the art agent or is there any other thought that um, what the future will be? I'm just quite curious about that. It's like some kind of how do we define ourselves like yeah. an independent organization. Daniel is probably mm -hmm. just like our own consulting process now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I think your question is a great one. Uh, I would like to try by saying, I don't know, because I think mm -hmm. it's important to not know. Um, that's mm -hmm. just again informally i know at the back of the arts council's mind because we are funded by the arts council here and i know that there yeah. was an interest a desire for it a dream for it to become like a a dance house like a french or a european dance house which is like a one-stop shop for for residencies and productions and then there's like performances and classes and workshops that was the original intention but mm -hmm. I feel like, especially now, yeah, it's really important to mm -hmm. reassess everything quite fundamentally. When I first applied to, to, to play this role, I almost didn't get it. And one of the reasons was that you're traveling so much, you won't be physically around to look after dance nucleus. But now everybody mm -hmm. understands remote working. 
right? I could be talking、mm-hmm. to you right now in Shanghai, or I could be in Buenos Aires, and it wouldn't make any difference. I can still do a large part of my work, and、uh, so a few years ago, people wouldn't buy it, right? This way of working, but now suddenly it's the default. It's so crazy how much things has changed.、Mm, yeah, and yeah. and、um, so I started right now. I'm we're in the midst of writing our our. Um, what you call a big grant application for the next three years、uh, for dense nucleus, and one of the things that I started writing about, just being deliberately a bit glib because I want to speak in a kind of sexy language that the government might like to hear, and、um, and <laughs> and one of them was to play with the idea of the word dance house, right? If you、mm-hmm. take, word,、yes. take them apart, dance and house in many ways is oxymoronic. They are opposites of one another. The house is static, is stable, it is permanent. Not nothing bad about it, right? But the dance, in by contrast, is more dynamic, fluid, ephemeral.、Uh, it, it needs to be mobile. So if you think of a dance house, you cannot think more dance. You cannot think more house. You have to think of something that's really. In the middle, something that's not, you know, like a Goldilocks kind of dance house. It cannot be too hard, too soft, too whatever, too too scattered and whatever, and then too concrete and too too dogmatic. It cannot be too static because then you 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 be it's counterintuitive to what dance itself needs to be. So to stay true to the idea of dance and house, I think we just got to be very. Uh, sensitive to walking this middle ground and go, what needs to happen next? So I think it's great to constantly ask at an individual or an institutional level, what is your five year plan, ten year plan, twenty year life goal, or whatever. But you are on now. The co- like COVID is teaching us that we have we can only make decisions a week at a time, three months at most, right? And that's not bad. Right, so it it is the difference between having a strategy and having tactics, because you cannot insist on your strategy being a plan. You can have a plan, a strategy towards the plan, but it's all about your day to day navigation that I think is is the the most important thing. So in some ways, I feel it may, it's not important to know what will become of dense nucleus. I think. It's more about、mm-hmm. we got to be responsive and 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 be true to what is needed, and I think that's the harder job. Yeah, it is the the, the truth of what is needed is for for this moment or at that moment actually.、Yeah. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Thank Are you, you still in、uh, Liang Tingyuan? No. Oh, sorry. I quit my <laughs> job. Sorry, it's, it's, she's <laughs> back. Another day, we、we'll、do another Zoom session. <laughs> yes, we、we'll、have another room. It's okay. It's a private room here. <laughs> all right, all right. Actually,、okay. I have another question. If there is anyone would like to, <clears throat> if there's no anyone would like to ask question, I will have another one. Please do. Okay. Please.、Mm. Okay. Um, another thing that I'm just thinking is. Uh, for、uh, this is a question for Ikai and、uh, Daniel. It's uh, why do you this uh this project is focused on the gender issue? Will you have a, a other issue in the future to to、uh, continue this kind of project? I think this is more a question、Or、for why, Ikai because he yeah, decided on it. Yeah. yeah, I decided actually. <laughs> All right.、Yeah. My I myself focusing on sex and gender issue is actually like what I mentioned.、Um, I'm thinking about is there so another approach how we connect with Southeast Asia and like、uh, what、mm-hmm. I say,、uh, Nabu Takamori, the article、mm-hmm, that he、yeah. wrote. I I I kind of really agree with that, and and that's、mm-hmm. kind of just a start. In the future, I don't know whether there's any different topic or issue we will focus on. But the idea is more like a building up or creating a networking. I think I will focus on it more, actually, and and I know Dance Nucleus not only just focusing on one issue or a certain kind of the theme like CP three courses, right? Actually, it's very a variety different topic and with four month long, right?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, courses. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah I, I thought that the, the, the thematic um, is sufficient. It's um, clear enough and vague enough, vague as in open enough. And I feel like maybe that's all that matters. Uh, yeah, but I, the rest is up to how the artists themselves and the facilitators really frame what they want to bring in and get out of, of, the, of, the, of the exchange. So I think that it was good to have a, a topic um, just to get something started. But if, and in, if in the end, somebody realized like I might be a woman, but I'm not dealing with gender issues. All I want to do is knitting. Like it's totally fine. Right. So, yeah. and um, so I, I think that it's, it, it's, it's just a, a specific way to bring a group of people together. And then it's like, as opposed to people come together and go like, okay, now mingle. And then like, why, why are we even doing this? So I felt like that gives it a very, clear focus and it is certainly relevant not just to not not just for the the reasons that Ika has already brought up but I think that uh I, I just want to clarify for for uh, our Asian colleagues who don't may not know Singapore well enough actually gender issues sexuality issues isn't taboo in in the arts um it, it becomes taboo and difficult and, and censorship uh, will become more likely when you're dealing with politics and uh, race and religion. Yeah, these are the more mm-hmm. sensitive stuff um, that, that you know, people get into trouble for. But in, in general, if, like, if you have nudity, if you're dealing with even... Um, I mean, granted, it is more conservative today than when I remember, say, in the early noughties, 2003, 2004. It was a lot more relaxed in Singapore than now. People seem to be more uptight now. So I feel like even that, this kind of discomfort mm. that people have towards gender and sexuality is worth, worth um, exploring, if not for the sake of uh, the, 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 the challenges of censorship. But I think that 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 difficulty, that awkwardness, applies to many parts of Asia, and uh, so I look forward to see what is the kind of what comes out of the the, the exchange amongst these artists. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the one of the point of building up the network actually. And if you are not mentioning about it, I think a lot of Taiwanese or maybe even me were having also the stereotypes of. Uh, nudity is actually not allowed to be happen or perform in Singapore, but actually, just like you say, the society is a little bit change the 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 the, the policy and how people see sexuality and the gender issues is a little bit different in different different city and countries now actually. So that's the point how we why we need to having the network and getting to know each other. Actually, getting to know each other is the start of having the networking for me actually. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah, I think we, we hope. I hope we can do this again, and maybe we'll think of a different topic. And um, mm, yeah. yeah, so I it's, forgot. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's really just the first time we're doing this, and and I'm I'm as curious as like a, probably everyone. But as Daniel say, since we're an independent organization, we have the flexibilities. So we don't have much time, only five minutes left. And, and I think I'm just give the time to our project manager. She will introduce the, the, the schedule of our uh, presentation week and then will allow everybody to, to know uh, what we will do and what would happen in two weeks after. Okay, so me. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm just going to do the share screen. I'm just going to do a very uh, quick uh, introdu- introduction about the future events, uh, like in the future. So as you see, like today we had the one of talk by Daniel and Ikai. And uh, in the beginning of June, 3rd of June, we will have uh, Zhou Dongyan, the uh, director from uh, Very Mainstream and Theater, Hen Zhu Liu, Hen Zhu Chang, and Andre from the uh, Pineapple Lab. So he's the creative director. And they will talk about the uh, queer issues and like gender related works in Taipei and Manila as well. And uh, in the same week, that weekend, two days, we will have the presentation from the residency artist and the two talks 
So uh, first day, the talk will be conducted by uh, the artists in Taiwan, Su Pingwen and Elsa Johnson in uh, the Philippines. They will talk about the feminist and the, re the research and the works about, uh, in Asia and Southeast Asia as well. And the last day, we will have a closing talk by uh, Gao Sen Xingnan and River. He is based in Paris and Taipei as well. They will talk, talk, talk about the future of gender issues in like the connection and the networking uh, in Southeast Asia as well. And also talk about uh, like the emerging artists in Taiwan now they are doing their gender issue related work too. So uh, yeah, that's the future events about this project. So please stay tuned and follow our Facebook so you can see the live streaming for this activities. So yeah, so let's finish in five, min uh, five minutes, right? <laughs> yes. On time, very nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Zomi. Yeah. And, and, and like what Zomi mentioned, uh, uh, if you want to know more information, uh, please check out web page. Uh, just type in uh, connect with Southeast Asia and or follow up the, uh, the Facebook uh, Thinker Studio and then you will get more information. And once again, the presentation of two weeks after, I, I actually don't want the artists, especially in this moment, to present a really complete or even a complicated work because it's, it's, it's really too difficult. You know, everybody is kind of stay their own home and it's not allowed to, to gather together. So I think giving out a concept is more important in this project, in this residency project, but how will they present in their own uh, concept is it will be pretty interesting. So, uh, I think that's the end of our talk, one more talk today. And if there's any question, maybe, or you want to know some more about Dance Nucleus, can email Daniel Dance Nucleus, right? And there's a web, uh, fan, uh, uh, Facebook fan page on Dance Nucleus as well. Daniel, would you like to maybe post the, the yeah, then people can know it because I think Dance Nucleus is still, uh, not familiar in Taiwan for uh, a lot of artists, but I know based on what I observe, a lot of artists now joining at a meeting today. Okay. So for the last, Daniel, do you have any other things you want to share to us? No, I would just say thank you for um, attending uh, this little chat and um, I hope yes. I will be in Taiwan soon. And um, <coughs> yeah, 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 I love going oh. to Taiwan. <laughs> I, forgot, I did actually introduce you being here several times. Yeah, two years ago, the present, uh, the, the, the performance Bunny in Taipei Art Festival, and then the residency project in TTT four years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Daniel is really quite, I, I think he's quite familiar with the art scene in Taipei, actually. And I also did my uh, army training in, in a little bit in Taiwan as well, in Hangzhou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you once again and all right good night everyone thank okay. you yeah Bye. hi js talk to you again sometime soon yeah js there's js from malaysia he's attending to yeah. yeah okay so good night everyone thank you